Hey everyone, it's Eric with FirearmTutorials.com and today I wanted to show you guys a little more uh, with the Noveski switch block. I talked a little bit about this probably, I don't know, at least six months ago and uh, kind of told you what it did and how it worked. Um, I've had it on here for, I don't know, shortly after I showed it to you and uh, it's worked great. I haven't actually really used it with a suppressor because I'm still waiting on a paper form four for that. So. Um, but I have run into some interesting things and I kind of just wanted to show you guys uh, some more about this if you're thinking of getting one. But, uh, you know, if we take a look at it here, so you can see that, uh, you know, I've got this cut section of the rail out here where uh, it sits. And depending on, I guess, when and where you bought one of these, um, they may or may not come with this little tool. So this is the actual Noveski switch block tool. And the way that it works is you've got um, a little section here, just kind of a little button here. So you push that forward to kind of disengage it and then you fit this little wrench over the top of it and then you turn it like so, you can see it there. And then it clicks into the next position. So now it's in the off position. If I were to fire it like this, it's just manually cycling the gun. The bolt doesn't even move at all. It's effectively blocking any gas from returning back into the, into the receiver. Um, if you go the next section, that's suppressed. So the idea here obviously is to eliminate the uh, extra blowback that's gonna come through. Uh, I found when I shoot this without a suppressor, it's enough to eject the shells, but it won't feed another one in. So you'll have to manually pull the uh, charging handle to get the next round in there. But if uh, you take this out and it doesn't take long, I put maybe, I don't know, 100 or 200 rounds through this thing and then, you know, waited for it to cool down because it does get pretty hot and then tried to just move it by hand, which I can do here. It's not too bad, right? So kind of just move that little tab and then flip it to the position you want. But in some case, it'll get to the point where there's enough carbon in there that it's, it's stuck pretty good. Um, what you don't want to do, which is what I did and uh, kind of paid the price for it, is I tried to oil it and stuff like that, thinking it would loosen it up. It basically didn't do any good. And the next 100 or 200 rounds that I was firing, it was shooting that uh, oil back down the gas tube and then I was getting just like this muddy buildup right on the bolt. And I was wondering, I started to have to use the forward assist. I was like, what is going on here? And then once I kind of looked in there, I saw I had like this muddy uh, kind of gummy consistency right along the bolt head. And that was from what I did to the uh, switch block here. So if you don't have the little Noveski tool, you can actually use a 9 16th wrench. Same process. You'll still have to uh, flip this little tab. But I found that with the 9 16th, if you just get the wrench at the right angle here, you see you're able to turn it. So if you're in a bind um, where this thing is stuck and uh, you don't have the tool, you can actually use this. It doesn't work quite as well because when you get to here, you see the side of the wrench is, is hitting the side of the rail, but um, usually that's enough to, to work it to where you can finish the rest of the way by hand. It's just that initial uh, breaking it loose that, uh, you know, require some type of tool. But uh, other than that, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna build another lower um, and use this same setup. So, um, you know, if you're thinking about going with the switch block, I mean, it works great. And uh, you just have to remember to keep uh, any oil or anything away from it because uh, it's definitely not designed for that. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.